and welcome to the channel. I'm Luke, Thunderhead 289 here on YouTube, and today on the channel we're going to talk about ignition systems and specifically we're going to focus on the Protronics unit today. Now, the reason I'm making this video is Protronics lately has seemed to have gotten a bad rap online from, you know, folks saying they have issues with them, this, that, and the other thing. And I've run Protronics for many years and never had any trouble. Now, what I've found when folks make these comments on YouTube or on my forum group is that oftentimes when I go through a battery of questions with the folks and ask how they installed them and set them up electrically, you know, I find that they made mistakes that are noted in the Protronics documentation of things you have to do if you want them to function correctly. And if you do all that stuff right, they'll perform great for you. I mean, the F100 behind me here, you know, the distributor in that thing has like 80,000 miles on it. And I've hardly ever had a problem with that truck at all. It's always run great. And it's had a Protronics unit in it the whole time. So we have a few vehicles around here today, you know, three different ones that I have Protronics units in. So we'll just take a look at each of those and see how to correctly set up the ignition system. Figure I might as well just roll on over there. And the old tractor it was sitting here overnight. See if it's going to start up easy for us. Not bad, a little bit of choke action. Keep going. Printer low gear. Come on, little buddy. All right, here we go. So we're under the hood of the 64 here. Now when I first picked it up, it was not running. And when I got it running, it ran like absolute crap. Now I had switched the carburetor so uh, with a known good one. So I knew that wasn't the issue. And then, of course, you know, we looked into the ignition itself. Now it had spark, but it had a Protronics retrofit unit in it. This is the distributor that was actually in the car, which is crazy. This is the original one with the little oiler flap on it you know this is probably the original original 64 distributor i'm pretty sure this is the original engine never been out of the car but all that aside someone had put one of those retrofit units in it and they had made one of the most common critical errors with installing a protronics ignition system now if you're familiar with a points ignition system you're probably used to seeing just one wire coming from the distributor and the whole purpose of that is just to interrupt the ground of the coil and then that discharges the spark and based on wherever the rotor is pointing you know on the cap that's how it determines which cylinder the spark is going to so on a typical points unit you only have one wire that negative interrupt but on a protronics you have two wires you still have that same negative interrupt you know the negative goes to the negative side of the coil and the ground for the module is actually through the distributor body you know common misconception there but also you need to power the module itself and this is where folks seem to have trouble so the easiest thing to do and what folks typically do is hook it right to the positive terminal on the coils now herein lies the biggest issue with when folks do that and they don't do anything else a typical breaker points distributor it will have on a Chrysler you know it'll have a ballast resistor or on Fords it has some form of a resistive lead which drops the voltage to the coil to that positive terminal on the unit there. So when you hook up your ignition module to that unit, you're seeing somewhere between seven and nine volts or whatever. You're well below 12 volts. Now it says in the Protronics documentation that you absolutely need to have this on a straight 12 volt circuit. And getting back to why this car ran so bad when I first got it running, uh, you know, I've whipped out my multimeter and probed the thing and we'll take a look at how to do that here in a second. You know, I could see that this original Protronics unit was getting well below 12 volts. And it probably did burn up the module. You know, it'll run for a while, and then it'll get kind of weird, and it will completely die. And then at that point, it's toast. And it's not Protronics' fault. You know, it's, it's user error. They do tell you to alter that, and we'll look at how to do that in a moment. So that's the first thing there. And a side note that I want to make about these Protronics units, and Protronics probably isn't going to like this, I don't know why they still make the original igniter and igniter 2 systems. If you're going to go with a Protronics, absolutely go with a Protronics igniter 3. You can get them as retrofit units. This distributor in here now 
is a full-on Protronics Pro billet unit. Again, it's the Igniter 3, has a built-in rev limiter you can set up, and the full-on distributor is really nice because you have all your advanced mechanism and everything right on the top, so it's very easy to dial in your timing curve. You know, carburetors, they're very forgiving. A lot of engine power and performance and efficiency comes from correct ignition timing, which getting a full-on tunable distributor really gives you the opportunity to do that versus, you know, these old school units, especially with the Ford because all the advanced mechanisms are down in the body and you got to very, to a high degree, disassemble the distributor to make any adjustments. And of course, I'll leave the link below to the FE version, which we have here. This is a 352, the small block Ford version, uh, some of the retrofit modules, and then uh, just a standard small block Ford HEI. You know, they have a lot of good offerings and I'll leave those below if you just want to sift through and, you know, check them out, but pretty good units. So testing the voltage to your coil really isn't that difficult. You will need a multimeter versus a test light. You know, a test light's not going to tell you what your voltage is. You actually want to see what you're sending to that coil. So you need a multimeter, of course. And then one of the typical mistakes people make when they're probing this is they will probe the positive and negative terminal on the coil. That's not going to work for you. You need to probe the positive side of the terminal on the coil and then you know just find any other ground on the body so in that way you know we're just probing the battery that's the easiest for us and now we're going to just turn the ignition on lord help me here so i don't turn the engine over because the distributor is half disassembled okay so now we should see 12 volts because i've modified this vehicle to remove the resistive lead scenario so we're getting proper voltage to our protronics unit and we are so this is what you want to see so just to do a comparison here let's go take a look at the 76 f250 because it has a duraspark unit and the duraspark also uses a resistive lead to drop the voltage and we'll see that on the multimeter all right we got the 76 all rigged up for an example a lot of folks seem to get confused i do have two blue trucks that are very similar but yet they are different. This one being a 394 speed. And typically I use this one largely for work. You know, it's not really a cruising rig. While the F100 over here, you know, it pulls double duty. Kind of a hybrid, daily driver, cruiser, you know, light load hauling. It does a pretty good job. So again, all original DuraSpark unit here. <laughs> you know, I just buy a battery, Luke. I'm always doing this. But uh, anyway, we'll turn the key on here. Boop. All right, now we should see something less than 12 volts. Okay, so we're seeing about six volts. And again, what you'll typically see with a resistive lead is somewhere between six to nine volts. You know, typically around seven or eight, seven and a half, whatever, it's gonna be something less than 12. Now, if you have a Protronics ignition and you see this, you know, you need to rectify this scenario before you fire the engine or else you very much so risk destroying your Protronics unit. And it's not an if, it's a when. You know, it's eventually going to fail if you have this resistive lead in place like this 76 F250 still has. All right, so modifying your signal lead to your coil. You really have two requirements here. You need full voltage, you know, and then you need something from a keyed source. And what that means is with the key off, you know, it can't be sending any power. So you know, some folks use relays. There's a few ways you can go about that. Um, a lot of folks just tag off their fuse panel uh, just because it doesn't take a lot of voltage or amp to run your ignition system. So the amp capacity of a different system can usually take on that load. So there's a few different ways to do it. This is just a quick and dirty way where you can tag into your fuse panel and pull from a 12 volt keyed source. So you'll either need a multimeter here or, you know, you test light guys. This is perfect for you where, and it might even be more handy because it's a tight fit in there. Uh, you can use a test light. And this is a pretty cool unit. I found this, uh, I found this in the barn when we moved in. So I'm going to go ahead and use this guy because it's nice and simple to follow. But if you were using the multimeter, you would just want to see 12 volts with the key on, no volts with the key off. Same with the test light, which we'll use here in a second. You want to see it lit up with the key on and not lit up with the key off. So Pick your poison, we're gonna use the test light. We have our test light all hooked up here, hooked to a bare 
screw on the dash, you know, and if all your chassis and frame grounds and engine grounds are correct, you know, this should be a good ground. You just want to use an unpainted surface, something conductive. So that's our negative side of our ancient test light here. And now we're just going to probe around. Currently the key's off. You know, things like the cigarette lighter, they're going to be hot all the time. But things like the heater, let's see if we can see this here, I'm trying to look at like three things at once. If we probe the heater, you know, we don't have any power because that should be a keyed source. So if we reach up and turn our key on, this is not comfortable for a guy who's like six foot six, six foot seven. So now we can take and probe some things and we have some power to things we otherwise didn't before. Now something, let's get down where you can see this here. So there we go. Power, power. Our heater, of course, has power now. Now what the auto manufacturers did back in the day is they would leave you with some of these as spares. So you see down here, this is a spare. There's no fuse in it. It's just something to tag into. And then this one is noted as a spare as well, and it's a spared keyed source. Now if I can get, oh boy. Smack my head on everything here. Turn the turn signal on with my face. That was good. And one thing I like to do here, if I'm gonna tag into the fuse panel, is you can always simply pop out a fuse and then you can tag to either side of it here and figure out where the power is coming in from. So the key is still on. You see that our test light is dead. And over here, our test light is hot. So what that's telling us is the power is coming in this side, this side over here, and then coming through the fuse. And so if I did tag in, I'd want to tag in on this other side of the fuse. That way you're still utilizing the effectiveness of your fuse. If you tagged in over here, power is just going right through. And then your fuse is kind of working like a T and this is going somewhere else. So, you know, if you're going to tag into your fuse panel again, you can look for things like spare fuses. Uh, make sure you are utilizing the fuse. And if you don't have any spare fuses, the heater is a decent go-to. Now, if you're on a Chrysler, you probably have a ballast resistor and you're in luck because you can just take that thing out and it's easy to deal with versus the Ford resistive lead. It's a little bit more integrated with the system. So anyway, that's just a quick way to probe around and figure out what you can pull off of for a keyed 12 volt source. So that's kind of ground zero for correctly setting up your Protronic system, at least getting the proper voltage to the unit so it's not going to burn out. Now the other thing that they note in a lot of the Protronics documentation is you want the proper resistance ignition coil. And Protronics itself offers the associated coil um, for the correct module and they'll list what you need. So these Igniter 3 modules use the 0.32 ohm um, ignition coil. And so you can pick those up from them and in their documentation they do say that they would highly recommend that you would use this. and you know, with all my installations, I've always gone along with their recommendation and I've never had any issues whatsoever. So again, deviating from their recommendations, you're just making yourself out to be your own worst enemy with these installations. Well, my friends, hopefully the takeaway here is that, you know, you just go and install your Protronics unit the way you're supposed to. If, again, you follow the documentation, you'll be just fine. So they're good units and if you treat them right, they're gonna treat you right. You know, I've run a lot of them over the years and never had any problems with them whatsoever. And so with that, I'm going to keep on keeping on going down the road here. Got to get to work and uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Thanks for coming along. Cheers, cheers.